Embassy of the Dead, Chapter 35, The Receptionist. While the small man was beneath the desk, Jake had snuck around the side and grabbed the cart. It was hardly a disguise, but as he hurriedly pushed it through the door, he felt some comfort that at least he had something. He found himself in another corridor, this one lined with doors. His heart sank. He had no idea which way to go. He winced as one of the doors swung open, nearly whacking him in the face. An elderly man stomped out, muttering, As if ninety years weren't long enough to be alive and now I'm stuck as a poltergeist. All I can do is make a scratching sound. The janitor at the old folks' home thinks I'm a faulty air vent. He looked up and redirected his rant in Jake's direction. It was forty years ago I last burgled. I've been straight a long time now. I wish I'd never nipped that flaming ring but I'm a romantic and knew the wife would love it. The only way I can be undone and stop those blimmin' longings is for it to be returned to its rightful owner. But the waiting list is 12 years. You don't get that for murder these days. He buried his head in his hand. Jake nodded in sympathy and read the sign on the door. Complaints. Not sure that will help. He turned and read the opposite door. Authorised personnel only. That seemed a better option. Jake tried the door, expecting it to be locked, but it opened with a click. A security guard sat reading a newspaper on the other side of the door. He looked up and nodded at Jake, who smiled politely. Fake it till you make it, as Sab would say, thought Jake. Sab was the kind of blagging person. Jake was usually the honest one. Not today, though. He was in a busy office with lots of desks and people on huge clunky phones. The chatter of multiple voices echoed around the room. I'm afraid your auditor is running late. There is no appeal process available for death. Hey, a woman called at Jake from a nearby desk. Has the Summerfield file showed up yet? Jake shook his head. The woman shrugged. Oh, well, it's only another 10 years until an undoer becomes available again. Summerfield will just have to wait. Jake felt a twinge of guilt, unsure what he'd done, but he needed to keep focused. He made his way across the office floor, trying to look like he should be there. At the far end of the office was a door that led to yet another corridor, in which Jake found, to his delight, a huge map. He searched for the You Are Here arrow, and then scanned the rest of the map, unsure of exactly what he was searching for until he found it. Undoer's Chambers. Bingo. And then there's a gap. Jake knocked on the door labelled good morning. No answer. He knocked again. Still no answer. He looked around the empty corridor then tried the door. It swung open. The embassy really needed better security. Good morning's chambers were bare apart from a desk, a neatly made bed and a bedside table. Good morning, Jake called out. Stiffkey, Cora? Jake sighed. He'd done so well to get here, but what was he supposed to do now? His cover could get blown at any moment. He suddenly felt very tired. Jake sat on the edge of the bed, tapping his pocket again to make sure the finger was still there. It squirmed at his touch. He stood up and walked over to the desk, sitting behind it and swinging back on the comfortable chair. Next to the phone was a directory. He opened it up and scanned the list of numbers until he saw a name he'd heard. The Ambassador. That's who Good Morning was going to talk to. Maybe he was there with Stiffkey right now. Jake picked up the phone and dialed the number quickly, waiting anxiously for it to ring. After just two rings, a voice answered. Not for the first time, Jake wished he'd mentally prepared for the conversation before picking up the phone. Ambassador's office, Maureen speaking. How may I be of assistance? I've got a finger, he blurted. There was a pause at the other end of the line. I beg your pardon? Uh, My name is Jake and I have a very important deliver... Jake paused as a sudden wave of nausea washed over him and he felt a sharp pain in his chest. Almost as if something was pulling him backwards, he remembered Eustace's warning. He'll feel it. A sort of tug. He had to get back to the cloakroom before he became trapped as a ghost forever. Hello? came a confused, muffled voice from the phone. I'm afraid the line's not very good. You'll have to speak a little louder. 
Hello, Ambassador's Office. This is Jake. I haven't got very long or I'm going to get trapped here. But is good morning there? I need to talk to him and it's an, it's an emergency. Hello? Good morning. Is that for you? What on earth have you been doing? We haven't heard from you in weeks. The Ambassador is furious, said the voice at the other end of the line. Jake let the phone drop from his mouth. Good morning had said he was going straight there and that he'd already spoken to the ambassador who had pardoned them. Jake was confused. And then he felt the tug again, sharper this time. He couldn't have long left. Uh, look, I, I don't know if you can hear me, and I don't know what's going on, but this isn't good morning. This is Jake Green. I was with Good Morning half an hour ago and he told me he was meeting the ambassador. I've got the finger. Someone's been trying to steal it from me. The person who's stolen the body, I think. And I gave them the box instead to fool them. But it won't fool them for long and I have to... Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? The line went dead. Uh-oh. Well, now the plot's thickening, isn't it? Why? Was suspicious of good morning. Yeah, well, I wonder if Jake's suspicious of good morning yet. He'll, well, he should be now. He's got a lot to think about now, though, because he's got to worry about getting back to his meat suit before also, the time runs out. Why did they say, um, why did he say to her about, why did he talk to her about the finger because they know she's the amb it's the ambassador's office. They'll know about the finger. You know, Maureen was the one who got the folder down and called Morkins in the first place. Do you oh, remember? Yeah. yeah. yeah.